show you how to solve legal question 1926 nearest exit from entrance in maze. It's a median legal question. So basically you're given a M multiplex M matrix maze. Something look like this and it's zero indexed, which meaning is index starting from zero with empty cells represented as this dot. So like empty cell, empty cell, empty cell here, and then this one is empty cell also. And then walls represented as plus, so like wall, wall, and here is wall. And you cannot, uh, you, you are also given the entrance of the maze, like where you enter, it's your beginning point, where entrance equals row and columns, it gives you the number, denotes the row and column of the cell you're and initially standing at in one step you can move one cell up down left or right so basically it's four directions up down left or right and you can step into a cell with a wall so let's say if you're standing from here right you can't step to the right side because it's a wall but you could step into the empty cell like up and or left in this case and you your goal is to find the nearest exit from the entrance basically from here you want to find the nearest exit an exit is defined as an empty cell that is at the border of the maze so basically the border is this line and this line and this line and this line here right but the wall doesn't count so basically your exit option is this one is an exit this one is an exit and then this one is an exit so the entrance does not count as an exit so either way where you start it doesn't count as a exit so just in case they give you an entrance from here they will tell you that this one does not count so return the number of steps in the nearest shortest path from the entrance to the nearest exit so they want you to return the shortest path and return minus one if no such path exists so like you see this maze here it's represented in the dot and plus and the entrance they give you here is this position is row one and a column two yeah it's a uh, row zero, row one, and column zero, column one, column two, right? So then the output is one. It takes one step for this entrance positions to get to the exit. And you can see the explanation here. There are three exits in this maze at one zero, zero two, and a two three in this case, right? So initially you're at the entrance cell one two, and you can reach one zero, by moving two steps, basically one, two, get to one, zero, right? And then you can reach zero, two by moving one step up, like right here, right? And you can um, reach, it is possible to reach two, three from the entrance. Oh, it is impossible. Like this is like totally impossible because the wall are blocked. So thus the nearest entrance is zero two from the entrance, which is one step away. So that's why the output here is one. And then they give you another example here. And if the, if your starting point is one to two and one zero does not count as an exit since it is an entrance cell. So initially you're at the entrance cell one zero and you can reach to one two, which is another exit by moving two steps, right? So one two, right? Thus the nearest exit is one two, which is two step away. So this function that you're gonna write needs to return the answer as two. And then for example, like this example, it's like impossible. There's no exit in this maze Then you're going to have to return minus one in this case. And there's some constraints here. Um, and, and, uh, maze I J either this entrance dot length and, um, row colon is smaller than that. And, entrance will always be an empty empty cell 
Um, this is a question asked by Amazon and Facebook in the last six months. So let's think about this problem. <sighs> Anytime that when they ask you like the shortest path and the, the first, you your first reaction should always be breakfast search because breakfast search like it always returns to return the shortest path to you because it always try to visit its neighbor when it moves one layer up. The idea of the breakfast search is that you wanted to add the the queue is always used together with the buffer search. So you always wanted to append the, the initial, the beginning point of the uh, cell row and column count to the queue, and then you start popping from the queue. Every single time when you pop from the queue, you want to go one step further, basically one layer or one level up. And then when you go one level up, you want to add these, this cell and this cell that is possible added to the queue to make sure that they're appended. And then you can continue to go through the queue and continue to pop and move one layer further. So in the end, you were guaranteed to find the shortest path. The other thing is like, in order to not to visit the cell that you have already visited already, then what you need to do is use a visit set in this case to avoid the, the duplicates. So I'm gonna show you how to do this in the code. So what I like to do is I wanna um, define the rows and columns first and the, it's a graph problem, so rows equals to uh, length of maze, and then the calls equals to um, maze to here, and um, this is the uh, definition. And then I will say the star point is, so I'm gonna just change the, the entrance of the entrance to a tuple because the way that they give to you is entrance uh, one, two, like a list. If I'm using a list, I'm not going to be able to add it to the hash set that I'm going to use to avoid the duplicates. So if uh, I would say the queue that I need to use is a uh, um, DQ and then uh, I'm just going to append the start to the DQ, right? And then I will set the result in the end, I need to return how many steps and I'll put the steps as zero. And then I'm gonna append the uh, start, the beginning of this start to the hash set to make sure I don't visit it again. So the while loop should be while Q, while Q exists, I'm going to start uh, popping and then add its neighbor and basically the next layer. So for I in range length of Q, right? So that's how many times that I need to go through the for loop. RC and the row and column equals to Q dot pop left. So whatever I pop from the queue basically is the initial value, the entrance one and two, one is the row and two is the column. And after I'm popping, I'm gonna do um, a condition check. Basically, if the row count does not equal to entrance and R equals zero or C equals zero, or r equals rows minus one, or c equals calls minus one. This, um, these four conditions right here, like the r zero, is basically to find out if this is a, a exit on the on the uh, side of the maze. Like uh, it, I think I mentioned it somewhere here that. Oh, our exit defined as an empty cell that is at the, the border of the maze. So if um, the RC 
it does not equal to the entrance and its or exit at the, the border. What I'm going to do if I'm already. So basically, I'm already at the entrance. Then what what I will be able to do is um, I can return the result immediately. That's like a base condition because I, if I'm at the exit at this point, I'm already find the answer. So in that case, I want to return it. But if not, then what I wanted to do is drdc in all four directions. I'm just gonna not gonna use the directions here. I'm just gonna write it uh, directly because it's like four directions and a pretty easy to write and zero one zero and then in this case is um it's basically all four direction then you want to do zero minus one and then um zero plus one in this case for the rdc in all four directions i'm gonna calculate the neighbor's row and a call so the neighbor's row and call equals to the original row plus dr basically dr is one minus one zero and zero right so c plus dc in this case so now i'm ca i have already calculated its neighbor it's basically is this layer and this layer when i calculated this layer i want to um do a uh, check condition to make sure that um, first of all, it needs to be within the range, right? It's it has to be inside of the the maze. So then I want to make sure it's um, bigger than zero or equals than zero, but then smaller than the entire rows um, within the range, not the border or anything. And then I'm gonna check the calls, uh, calls. Yeah, there's a equal as well, as well because it could be equal to zero and then i want to check if maze um the uh, the row value of the row call in the maze is uh equals to has to be an empty cell right because i'm not when i'm at this guy's neighbor i'm only going to add this guy and this guy so it has to be empty cell if it's like a wall here absolutely i'm not going to add it so then also another condition is that the row call has to be not in visit something that i had never visited before then i will i will do the following the following is like i'm gonna append it to the queue the row call and then visit i'm gonna add it to the visit set so then i won't visit it again and after the entire for loop what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna every time for every time that i need to go through the for loop i will need to add the one to the result so each layer i'm adding one step if that makes sense so then in the end i'm going to be able to calculate the step value but if i go through the entire queue like after i pop everything from the queue i couldn't find it then i'm gonna have to return minus one in this case i think that's it for the code let's see yep it went through okay great so if you think this is helpful, uh, please like my video and subscribe to my channel and I'll have more legal questions coming for you soon. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.